Welcome to Start Here, Go Everywhere. I am Linda Moyo, an alumna of Jobs for America's graduates. On this podcast, we bring you incredible guests from all walks of life, offering the skills to educate, inspire, and challenge you to succeed in both school, on the job skills, and in personal life, leading to productive and rewarding careers. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first day of the first ever NCA week. I'm Raya Klima, and this is my national officer team. I am the current NCA president, and I am currently a sophomore at Cloud County Community College in Concordia, Kansas. We are so excited to be with you today. Hi, everyone. I'm Kira Canada, and I'm your national president-elect from Des Moines, Iowa, and I am a senior at Waukee High School. Hi, my name is Lauren Howard, and I'm the secretary for the National Career Association, and I'm a senior at Little Rock Southwest High School. Hi, my name is Shirley Garcia, and I'm the parliamentarian for the National Career Association, and I am from Illinois, and I attend Blackhawk Community College. There's so many acronyms in JAG. There's an NCA, CDC. So what is NCA? Well, I will go ahead and start with this one. I was honestly equally as confused when the NCA came to be. I had been in JAG for five years up until the creation of the NCA. So this new acronym after learning everything, thinking I had it all figured out, kind of threw me for a loop. But then I actually was able to attend the first ever constitutional convention for the NCA, which is essentially where we created the policies and procedures and bylaws that shape what the NCA is. So although JAG was previously in around 38 states, they were never really unified as one national organization. Each state had their own career association, but there was never a national one. There was always national competitive events, but it was not quite the same thing because there was no unifying set of leaders. So when the NCA was created, it essentially unified all of the states that are in JAG and gave us four the opportunity to be the first ever NCA student leadership team. So we are basically creating that same thing that happens at the state level, just at a national level. So there's a bit more unification. Okay, so our second question is, why did you compete for the NCA officer position? Now, I know we have a lot of stuff going on. We have a lot of clubs that we're joining or that we're already in. So why was it important for you guys to become a part of such a new and almost unestablished program? I'm glad you asked that, Lauren. I would say one of the main reasons that I took on a role in the NCA was to further my leadership skills. I've always considered myself a leader and my peers have always considered me a leader, but I really wanted to take my leadership to the next step and really make an impact on students all over my city, state, and now nationally. And this really helped me to do that and to put myself on a national platform to, I feel like, reach more students and share my story. I definitely agree with that. I also feel like it's very important to represent the people who are around me as well. Um, A lot of the students who are at my school are minorities or they come from underprivileged backgrounds. And it's very important for them to have programs like NCA and programs like JAG so that they can have these resources for them to be able to learn how to not only be financially literate, but also be prepared for post-secondary education and what comes after high school. Yes, I totally agree with that. See, and I agree with both of you because it's nothing like sports either. Because although you can be a leader or a team captain in sports, you have to show off kind of so you can be that spotlight. But when it comes down to being in JAG, it's kind of everyone gets that chance, even if they're the quiet kid or they're not that team captain that the sport takes. But it allows for everyone to have a top position, not just one. Yeah, and I think that's what really makes JAG unique. Yeah, and I I really agree with that. I mean, I'm someone that was never really that great at sports. And in the community that I live in, sports is our entire community. That's all that people are ever rooting for. So being that fresh face and being like, hey, I'm here and I'm doing something without doing it in a sport was kind of a big deal for a lot of people around me because a lot of my friends we were always like oh 
you know, we don't have a whole lot going on. We like going to the games and stuff, but we're not playing. So we're not being seen by some of the people in our community. So having this opportunity to step up in a different way really set us apart from other, everyone else. Our third question is, how do you apply to become an NCA officer? How do you navigate through such a complicated process? I think we all have a little bit different um, experience with this application process. And this is like one of the bigger questions that we get asked a lot. And with it being our first year, it was a little bit different from us, for us. But I think Raya can help us a little bit on some tips for you guys. So the application process is a little bit lengthy, admittedly. I mean, it takes a lot of rigor and effort and you have to be willing to put your best foot forward. That's something that stands true in any level of the NCA, but especially at the national office level. So there are a few required documents in order to be a candidate, which is the application, a nomination form with a listing of all of your previous offices that you have held and then a verified record of academic support so this is like your high school transcript your grades basically saying that you are a good student and that you are willing to put in the work and then finally you have to have a statement of support with six with signatures from your local advisor your school principal and a parent or legal guardian if you are under the age of 18 and the state advisor of your state now, this is just the application. There is also a written test and an interview process. And all of this information can be found in our NCA Policies and Procedures Handbook, which can be found on the JAG.org website. That is the best place to go for all information regarding anything NCA. And also don't get too stressed out about the lengthy application process or any of those things. Your specialist or your CSA would totally love to help you and you can even reach out to one of us um, individually um, but really plan ahead and start preparing now so that that process is easier for you and more comfortable and once you get um, past the application and you are at the national um, competing for an officer position then that's when you'll take your test and those kind of things so just worry about your application for now and getting those recommendations and whatever the other mm -hmm. things are that you need and there is also an essay that is with your application. And we don't say all of this to freak you out. I mean, all four of us did all of it and look at where we are. It seems like a lot, but it is totally and entirely worth it. If you are wanting to put that effort in, you will succeed, even if you just try. Because trying is better than ne never doing anything at all. Yes. And also we have this laid out a little bit more clearly this year with it being us going into our second year. When all of us first started, there was no background, there was no foundation. So you guys really do have something to fall off on or fall back on. So just be mindful of that. Which will lead me into my next question is, you know, people ask, well, how did you prepare? How did you get ready? And what did you do before being elected as a national officer? I'll be completely honest. I didn't. I had no idea that I was going to get to run for this position until about a week before the event where we were going to be elected. So all of my preparation was done across three or four days. Luckily, I had my specialist beside me for all of it, but that is something that is so important. If you want to do something like this, start preparing now. Look at the application and see, oh, I could fill this out right now. And whatever you aren't ready to fill out, you can save it and you can come back to it later. It's not going to just magically disappear. You have time to work on it, but it's better to get an early start than not do it until right before. Yeah, and see, we all kind of had similar experiences regarding to preparation time and that kind of those kind of things because like I said previously we didn't have a lot of background and things to really rely off of. So it was a little bit different for us. But we, that's why we're the first national officer team, because we figured this out and we figured it out together. And now we are trying to prepare it and make it better for the next group of officers. I was pretty much in the same boat as Ryan. Uh, about a week before I was set to go on the trip, my specialist told me that I was going to be running for a position. And I had no idea what that would entail. But upon being elected for the position, I realized how much I would have on my plate and how much I would have to organize, put myself and 
kind of neglect my procrastinating habit. <laughs> um, so it takes it takes a lot, and it is very, very it, it takes a lot to be able to organize your time and your resources in such a manner. And seeing I am the secretary, that is one of my biggest jobs. So I definitely had to kind of buckle down and kind of tell myself, okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to do it. And this is when I'm going to do it. It's all about structure and planning and telling yourself that at the end of the day, you got this. Yeah. And I think for me as well, um, I kind of seen it as a second chance because I initially wasn't selected um, to attend the National Career Development Conference last year because I didn't place in my original competition. And it's a really ironic story, but when I found out that I could apply to be a national officer, I instantly wanted to take up on the opportunity to kind of redeem myself because I didn't feel good enough because I didn't make it in my competition. So when I was presented with this opportunity, I knew something good was gonna come out of it because it was a second chance and I knew that I wanted to do something at the national level. See, and just like everyone else, um, I, it was, what, 15, I think, hour drive down to Texas from Iowa. And I wasn't necessarily prepared for anything, but through those two years that I've been in JAG, I learned a lot of things. And so that helped me on the test, writing the essay, interviews and stuff like that. So there's no really studying to prepare but more just being engaged in the classroom as a local officer state officer and hopefully soon some of you become the national officer team and definitely reviewing the handbook is something that will help you when it comes to the test especially and kind of just being familiar with jag as a whole obviously we just talked about how to prepare when it comes to wanting to be an ncaa officer but one of the biggest things that you can do to prepare is to get involved at any level possible. So I was in the program for six years and I was involved both locally and at the state level throughout all of my years of school. So what I would do is I would attend all of the leadership conferences. I would help out in my own community and I would try to step up and be a leader wherever I could. But what about you guys? What did you do to get involved? And what do you think others should do to get involved in their local and state levels? I would say the biggest thing is getting involved. What it, regardless of what that looks like, go out and do stuff. <clears throat> and a lot of this ties into networking. When you're going to these different conferences, whether it's at the local level, state level, network, network, you never know who could be there. There's a, maybe a future employer there, maybe um, one of the judges that could be at one of your competitions. You never know. And some tips with networking, some people are, you know, you get nervous and things like that, and that's okay. But when you're networking, always smile if you're at a conference. Smile, smile, smile. Look like you want to be there, like you belong there. And if you run into someone or you're walking past someone, you know, introduce yourself, give them your good nap, your name what your position is, what your role is, what you're doing at that particular conference. Kind of tell them a little bit about yourself, you know, just a short, sweet elevator speech or whatever that looks like for you. And that can get you so far. And if you know you're planning on to maybe become a national officer or you know you want to do something different, start networking now so people know your name. People know, oh, that girl, I know she wanted to run for the national office, you know, so people will be looking for you. And I think that's my biggest advice is to network, network, network. And even if you do become a national officer or even if you do get to that national level and you do accomplish that, keep networking. There's always more opportunities. I would also say it's very important to show initiative when it comes to getting involved in the events that go on around you. Um, my JAG program isn't as big as a lot of other JAG programs in other states. We don't really compete. We don't really do a lot of things that other states are able to do. But whenever we do get the chance to do something like NCDC or going out to compete at a competition, um, I would always make sure that um, everybody got an opportunity to at least speak or do something or show that they wanted to go or that they wanted to participate. And it's always important to make sure that you and your JAG family, because you are a family, are always connected and that you always are on the same page and you all know what to do. 
it's not necessarily saying that an opinion or um, a statement can be wrong. I mean, if you really have something in you that says, wow, I think that this should be said, say it. Because like they say, a silent mind won't get the idea out. But if you can get that message that you really want to say, um, even if it's, let's say, to just another one of your classmates, um, the idea can grow from there and it's not just going to be pushed aside and forgotten. And it's also, we all have our own talents. Maybe yours is math, maybe it's history and this or that. Make sure you involve that into Jack because if you are if you have a strong suit, like for example, me, I'm good at math. Surprisingly, I'm not a very big public speaker and I ended as a parliamentarian, but it's always that one step that you'll learn to do those things that maybe you weren't comfortable with at the beginning. Like I joined my junior year and that was our COVID year for us. Like it was a pandemic where you only went to school for half of the time. And it really allowed me to appreciate my teacher, uh, my specialist and all those people around me. And they pushed me to be who I really wanted to be in the classroom and out. Yeah, I think it's really important to step out of your comfort zone when it comes to programs like JAG. Um, with these different types of associations or programs, you will get a lot of opportunities to speak to many different people, go to many different events, and basically show yourself off to potential employers or potential internships or scholarships. You never know what will come your way. So it's extremely important to put yourself out there and take a step out and make sure that you are seen and you're heard. And then most importantly, that you get your point across and that you actively take on any opportunity that comes your way. And speaking of all of these opportunities, let's give a little insight of some advice maybe we can give to new JAG students or aspiring JAG students. I think, you know, just to touch on what Lauren said, stepping out of my comfort zone was quite literally the biggest difference in my experience in JAG. I, my first couple years of JAG just kind of stayed in the back. I really enjoyed all of the activities, but I was not going out of my way to like go talk to people or brag about how much I liked the program. And then my freshman year came around and something in me just switched. And that's like that instance where I stepped out of my comfort zone, everything changed. I was able to talk to anyone about anything. And JAG really gives you so many different opportunities. I mean, a lot of us have discovered the kind of career that we want because of the experiences that we've gained through JAG. And it's okay to like, don't be afraid to try something new. Like I, when I first started college, I was convinced that I was going to be a psychology major. And then I was about ready to start college and I had been doing all of my public speaking with JAG and I had been on the radio a few times and someone said to me, you have a really good radio voice. And I was like, oh, I've, I've never even thought about that and how that's a career. And then through my involvement in JAG, I was able to be like, hey, like local radio station, can I come talk to you guys and like learn what you do? And then after doing something like that, I completely changed my major. I managed the radio station at my college and it's just that one instance that can completely change your trajectory on life. Really just leaning in and diving into what is happening during your JAG class. And I know a lot of times some of it is really, um, sometimes it may be boring or, you know, sometimes it may be a really hard topic for you to talk about or whatever the case is, really take what you're learning and think about how you can apply it to your life and make it real. My class feels so real. It feels like a class, but it doesn't really feel like a class at the same time. It feels like I'm doing something to better myself, better my classmates, and to move on to something further after high school. And I think that that's kind of where some people kind of get stuck in JAG is they're just there. Um, they're completing the work. They're present. They're not taking all the opportunities that they can have. And a lot of that, again, like I stated before, is networking finding those opportunities and really engaging in them. I think JAG really is what you make it. Um, it can be as much or as little as possible as you want it to be. It really is just what you want from it and how you see that. 
you start to feel comfortable in the classroom when you get comfortable with the people around you. I mean, like she said, it's a family and it's sometimes hard to um, get necessarily, not necessarily comfortable, but get your voice out when you're not familiar with everyone around. And I mean, even if you've been growing up, because in my classroom, we all went from elementary up to high school together. So it was kind of like, oh, we kind of know each other. I mean, we know of each other, not really know each other. But um, once you start to realize that you guys have a lot of things in common, you start to say, wow, well, you want to study this and I want to study this. Maybe we can partner up and study together or do all these things. But you start to feel more comfortable, which allows for growth in the Jack classroom. Uh, another important piece of advice that I would uh, give to future or potential JAG students would be don't underestimate yourself. Uh, when I first became the secretary, it was almost like a little bit of a shock, but at the same time, like I said, I had to buckle down and realize that I needed to become more organized. And there were times that I did underestimate myself or lowball myself and think that maybe I can't do it. But not only is JAG a student success program, it's a program that leads students to success. It gives them the tools and the resources that they need, valuable tools and resources for students to be able to attain and retain and keep with them for literally the rest of their lives. Everybody has the potential to be successful. Everybody can be successful. It's about taking the initiative and essentially taking charge in your own life and your own success. There's so many things that like, I didn't even know, like, there's so many places I wanted to explore, but I didn't get that chance outside of JAG, because I remember my first time, I think it was CDC, it was in Des Moines, which is like a three-hour drive for me, and I had an experience something like this, like, it was a hotel, um, it was one of those hotel rooms, like a ballroom kind of, and um, I hadn't really been to an event that big in JAG before, and I believe this was my senior year so last year and I was like wow this is a new experience for me so I kind of want to know what that best or your favorite experience is for all of you I would say I've had a lot of positive great experiences um with my time throughout JAG um but I'll say definitely top two um top one was becoming the national president elect um just the days leading up to that and um all the support and preparation it was just so nerve-wracking and I even got sick during the trip and I thought that I was out of the race but I still gave my speech while I was half sick and just the journey that it was to get there and then finally like there's all these people around and the just the atmosphere of the conference, uh, like when they were announcing the winners, um, it just made me feel on top of the world, literally. And I was just so in shock and I was just so happy. And I can't think of anything better that's happened in my life that I've made me feel that way. And I think like that's something I will never forget. And my second one is the gala um, in DC that we hosted preparing for that again we had to step out of our comfort zone but we were working with an awesome director love bryant <laughs> um but the final show was amazing and we got so many compliments and it just felt so good to um know that we were hosting it and be the first ever students hosting an event like that and so that was another big thing and it was very very special also knowing that Ken is usually the one who runs these things and he was nervous for us and we just wanted it to be special for him and it was nothing less than special. So I think that one of my fondest memories at, from all six of my years in JAG will always be the Dallas trip, mostly because they were about I want between 15 and 20 students from Kansas and I rode eight hours. It's an eight hour drive from where I live. I was only with my state for about two hours of that entire drive because I had to get in a separate vehicle and get there on time for like all of the officer events in preparation, like the test and the interview and all of that stuff. So 
going with a group of students that were all from my state that I did not really get to know just because I was so busy doing all of the officer things. The moment that I won and they all jumped up and were like screaming for me. I mean, I didn't even think that some of them knew my name because I had not talked to them at all, but they were just so excited for me. And it was one of those moments that I think I'll just always remember. And then another kind of small memory is just like in Washington DC, when we had all of our team meetings, if you become a national officer, you become like a family. I mean, we were hanging out and just laughing about things. We were supposed to be being productive, but admittedly we would get sidetracked and we would just sit there and be having such a good time. And I just, I treasure those memories. I would say the Dallas trip was very, very significant for me too. Um, seeing everybody be so excited, not only to meet us, but to get to know us before we were elected. I had people coming up to me asking about where I was from and I was just like, I'm just from Little Rock. And there's nothing, <laughs> nothing that important about Little Rock. But everybody was really excited to get to know us and kind of learn about our backgrounds and where we're from and who we are as people. And seeing everybody be so excited for us when they called our names out, it was such a warm and endearing feeling that I will never forget. But that moment is also special to me because it was the moment that I got to meet my fellow officers. And we had met before, but like sharing that moment with you guys was something that is extremely special. And to see how far we have come and how, how good we all get along is something that I will always hold very close to my heart. I will, I will never forget right, her ramen earrings. <laughs> I will just never forget Lauren's ramen earrings when we won because in her headshot on the jag.org website, you should go look at it. She has the coolest little ramen bowl earrings on. She had cool earrings every single day, but those are just the ones that are cemented in my brain. So. And I think um, just like what Lauren said, um, the overwhelmingness of the support from not just people that you know, but people that don't know you is what really made it special. Like, and like Raya mentioned, like people from my state that I didn't know literally were hugging me, like almost crying because I won. And I think that just really goes to show how much of a family Jag is, even people you don't know. So I think that's another big part of it. See, and I think Dallas probably was also my like biggest and favorite memory. Just because, I mean, only two of us went from Illinois. Um, we also went to my school so it was kind of like we only talked on the bus because i didn't really our bus was quiet but it was loud so i mean not everyone was talking to each other but if you went to your like with some of the people around you you kind of were like oh hi hi here but then when it came down to the ceremony when we got names on the stage i was the first one called up and i remember that me and kira were like since we're both part of the Iowa um, side, we're like, wow. So hopefully one of us gets caught up. And we were like talking about it the whole trip. It was like, oh, who's going to get caught up? Is it going to be Kira? Is it going to be me? And we're like, oh, what if we both get caught up? But <laughs> my name got announced. And even people that I didn't even like know or talk to were chanting my name. And it just felt amazing. And then... It was also like, oh, Kira Canada from Iowa as well. So we were just all so happy that both of us got the opportunity to be on the national team. We've talked a lot about these different experiences that we've had and, you know, all the memories that we've made from participating in this program. So what is your guys' biggest reason for why people should participate in the NCA? JAG and NCA, both associations, you get this huge family of people who will support you literally no matter what. They will always be by your side. They will cheer your name. They will chant for you. And you probably never met them before. But it's a community of people who are so open-minded. Not only that, but like-minded individuals who realize their potential and are leaders and who want to get to know you and everything about you and your plans and your goals and where you come from. That is the experience that I've had. And that is what I would want to pass on to somebody else. Yeah. And I totally think that that's probably the biggest thing overall with Jack is just having that support system and that family. And that's what makes Jack so special. 
Um, but also another thing is the career oriented curriculum. I personally have never really had a class that focused on what I wanted to do after high school and not just college, but truly specific to what it was that I wanted to do. And like Brian mentioned, I was able to kind of figure out what I really wanted to do and not someone telling me this is what you need to do. This is how it's done, but rather me telling them what I wanted to do and them helping me take the steps and do what I needed to do to get there or what steps I needed to do to research about it or whatever that looked like or internship. Jag has helped me with that extremely. And again, just having that network of people that you can reach out to really takes you a long, long way. And through Jag, I, me and Lauren were able to tour my dream school and I wouldn't have been able to do that without Jag. And that's a story for another day, but just like that, it just really goes to show how far a relationship can go with someone and the depth that people of Jag will go to see you to succeed. Everyone wants to see you succeed. So if there's something that someone can do to help you, they're going to do it. Yeah, I mean, networking is huge in every situation and Jag just gives you the opportunity to amplify that. And, you know, we just spent a minute, a few minutes talking about our favorite experiences as an officer but like even before I was an officer some of my best memories throughout high school were just meeting people through JAG whether it be other students like I'll never forget when I was staying at the hotel in Dallas and two girls ran up to me in the hallway and she they just had a huge box of crumble cookies and they were like hey do you want a cookie and then they just like gave me a cookie and ran off down the hall and it was just one of those things where it was like I didn't really talk to them but I know that I'm gonna go find them later later and thank them and you just, you meet all of these people, you make so many friends, even if you don't see them very often, you check in, you say, hey, how's this going? You told me about this. I remember when you talked about it. And it's just those special, like, you don't have to be their best friend, but you know that they're going to be there to support you when you succeed. I think you should participate extremely. It's extremely important because you start to realize that you're creating your own pathway that maybe your science class your math class your english class doesn't necessarily prepare you for but you learn to write your resume you learn to really carve what those kindergarten to 12th grade teach you in one class and i think that's another thing a great great perk of being on the national officer team is we are our own little group too. We have our, you know, our local groups and stuff, but we are our own little family too. And we have um, that really strong relationship with um, the four of us and we're all there for each other. Thank you all for tuning in today. We hope you guys all enjoy NCA week so much. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media or leave a rating and review. To catch all the latest things, you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at JAG Students. Thanks again and see you next time.